a lot of people watch too much TV and there's way too much information on how to cook a steak, right? Season it with all this craziness. Let's do, you know what I mean? And what happens is that a lot of these people that are, 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 are trying to show people how to cook stuff, they don't go through the right process, right? They don't tell them like, hey man, what you're trying to do is just trying to sear it right, season it well, and that's all you need. Something that you could do out of your house, something, you know, we all have a bulb of garlic somewhere, you know, and something that that's easy, you know, and no matter what, it comes out well. With my steak, like the way I cook it, you don't need A1 sauce, you don't need, cause just, it's good just like that. So what we have here is a New York strip. I usually like to go with a, a ribeye, cause ribeye is a little bit fattier than a New York strip. But you know what? It is what it is. With steaks, you know, people always want to get like a New York steak. Me personally, I always like to get a ribeye, cause ribeye has a lot of interior fat, right? And it's richer, you know. I, I like that, or maybe even like um, like a T-bone. You know, you you because when you have steak and you're spending all that money, you want fat, right? People want to get a fillet, and fillet has no fat. People are always like. Oh, that's fancy, a filet mignon, right? But that's the driest piece of meat you could ever have. And that's where they add that little piece of bacon around it, right, to incorporate fat. I don't know why anyone likes that stuff. Um, a lot of people like to use thyme and rosemary, but you know, a lot of us don't even know what it is. A lot of us only like the flavor of it. A lot of us don't want to pay four bucks for two sprigs of it, you know? But what we do have is a lot of us have garlic at home, right? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna get the garlic and we're gonna cut it in half like this. Right, so it should look like this. Whee. And then we're gonna do this with the steak. We're gonna pat them dry. Cause what we're trying to do is when we sear it, we're gonna want a dark, nice, like caramel color, like my beautiful skin, brown like that. That's what I usually do. I cook it. I'm all like, oh, that's the proper way. So the, the salt I talked about earlier, the kosher salt, we season high, right? We season high because we get everything. If I was to season low, it would just get that little piece, right? So we always season high. So salt. And then I like to season the little fat cap heavy. That little guy right there. Then we get the pepper, right? Same thing. Season. While you're doing all this, have a pan getting hot. It's super important that your pan is as hot as, pos as possible, right? Dude, all you really do need is kosher salt and pepper. So then we add a little, a little oil to it. Some people don't like to, I like to. You saw my pan? It's a pan that we all have at home. It's nothing nothing fancy, nothing nothing crazy. And always when you put the steak in, you go away from you. So you put it down like this, and then away. That pan is only be as hot as it is that first time, right? It's never gonna be hotter again, right? So what happens is you throw that pan the first time, you want a, good, a really good sear, right? Make sure it's good. Then I always like to use a spoon when I cook, you know? So now with my spoon, I'm gonna push it down just a little bit. Just to make sure all of it's touching the, touching the fire, right? Touching the pan. And you know, and the reason we want, we want the pan to be hot is so that, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to sear it, you know, get that, 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 that layer of flavor, you know, and, you know, you spend money on this, so you want to try to show it some love, you know? And then once you know that it's good, and you can, like I told you, like I cheat, right? I pick a little side, just kind of see a little bit. I'm all, eh, looks pretty good. Now I look at my skin. Uh, looks like it. So then I get it and I flip it. Right? So if you look at it, you see it's brown, right? It looks good. Okay. So now this is where everything else comes into play. This is when I get the garlic that we had couldn't we had couldn't have. And then we're gonna put it with the garlic side down. So now it's gonna start getting a lot of that garlic flavor we're gonna part into that steak itself. Right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, with the spoon, we're gonna push our steak up a little bit. And then, right, so what happens is that oil pulls down here now, right? Okay, so then, right, not like my grandpa says, it's in the gas. So now we have butter, right? And we have butter too. You don't have to add butter, but butter makes everything delicious. So then once the butter's melting, right, we're leaning the pool in the bottom, and now we're getting that butter and we're basting the steak with that butter, right? And the cool thing is that as long as we're basting with this, it's gonna part the nuttiness of butter. You know, it's gonna get the aroma that we're looking for. What's happening though, is that butter's super hot. So no matter what, it's still cooking evenly, right? So not only is the pan, the heat from the bottom, you're getting heat from the top now because the butter, the butter's super hot, right? 
So it's still doing its thing. You're giving it all that love, you know, and I like to do it over the garlic as well. So then now you're smelling garlic. You know, you're getting all these complex flavors and it's something that it's just butter and garlic, man. When you're basting it, you know, you're imparting a lot of that butter that's transforming, you know, into the bird nosette or the bird noir, right? So now that butter is transforming into this nuttiness. You know, and if you want, dude, if you have jalapeno, throw jalapeno in here, man. Do the same thing I'm doing. You can add spice to your steak, you know? Traditionally, you know, you'll throw a, a sprig of rosemary in here some thyme and do this, right? But you know what? You don't want to go to the store. You know, as you could see, you know, that from the point that I had turned it to now, it's gotten a lot darker now, right? And it's just because of that butter that we're doing, you know? And people are like, oh my God, you're burning the butter. Nah. So now what's happening is that, you know, so there's different, there's two different French terms, right? Burn Noir and Burn Noisette, right? A brown butter and a black butter. And all that's happening now is that that butter is getting nuttier and nuttier the more that we do this, right? See, and you didn't even know. Now you know, hey man, my steak is French. Once you're done, right? We get our steak that we just made. And then I like to get the garlic that we just did too, right? And the cool thing is that garlic, like if you're kind of like, oh man, because you could get this garlic, push it out and put it over your steak, right? And smash it into your steak and then cut your steak and it'll be good. Or you could just save the garlic and then use it to make salsa, use it to make soup. You wanna make guacamole? Use that, that garlic, you know? So now you have garlic that has all that beef fat in it. And it's real important that once you cook a steak that you let it rest for at least three or four minutes. Some, like, some guys like to let it rest for like seven, eight minutes. What you're trying to do is just let it rest, do its thing, go back and then cut it and then slice it. But that's all we need for a perfect steak. Look at this.